73, this subject's gonna kill somebody. We got them, we got them. They're down in the ditch. Look around. He's wrecked, he's wrecked. No matter where you are, at any second, it could happen to you. Oh man, we need some help. Because desperate criminals use desperate measures. No matter who gets in the way. For the next 60 minutes, you'll get a close-up view of what officers see every day. You'll ride shotgun in the most terrifying chases on the road. You'll feel the heat of the most explosive acts of criminal insanity ever captured on tape. Much of this footage has never been viewed by the public. Police and news agencies send us their most shocking videos. He's got a gun, he's got a gun. So that you can know what they know. That to let your guard down, even for an instant, Get in and could mean disaster. He's gonna run the red light, he's gonna run it. So crank up your TV and don't turn away because real life happens in the blink of an eye. Shut your truck off. I'm Sheriff John Bennell. During my years in law enforcement, I was always struck by the sheer insanity of criminal behavior. Because when someone makes that first insane decision to break the law, no matter how it starts, this is how it usually ends up. So hang on. What we're going to show you now is as crazy as it gets. Los Angeles, California, rush hour. Moments ago, the suspect in the red truck was accused of exposing himself in public. But when the LAPD began to converge, this man who wanted attention suddenly got more than he bargained for. He's been on a freeway. Looks like we have a helicopter. We're following a chase that's been going on right now for about 25 minutes. With officers close behind, the man suddenly veers off the famous Hollywood freeway. As the chase rolls on to surface streets, citizens come out of their homes to catch a passing glimpse. We've got pedestrian traffic off the side of the road. One officer tries to block off an intersection. He almost gets rammed. Oh, okay, now he's gonna be wanted for aggravated assault with a vehicle. With a growing number of cruisers closing in, the suspect becomes more brazen in his attempts to shake the LAPD and police get stuck behind those other cars. He tries to lose officers in the surrounding landscape. The roads on these Hollywood Hills very, very curvy. Dense trees and sharp turns make it difficult to see what lies ahead. Uh-oh, okay, another truck coming the other direction. It's another pickup. It's headed right for the driver. The suspect goes head to head, pound for pound with another pickup. Refusing to back down, he wins the duel. As he rolls through the hills, more citizens who have been following the chase on TV come out for a first-hand look. There are more pedestrians. It looks like they're cheering the suspect on. Desperate to escape the spotlight, he ducks back into the crowded city. Turning onto Sunset Boulevard. Now on flatter roads, he buzzes over blacktop and through intersections. Suddenly, he finds himself trapped behind other drivers. Before he can back out, Officers swarm in. And he's stuck. This could be the end of it right here. But after careful consideration, officers instruct motorists to clear the way. Well, police have been in this position hundreds of times before. They don't want to create a situation that puts innocent people in danger. With this many civilians in the way, it's time for police to make a crucial decision. We're now hearing that ground units are being pulled off of this chase. The cruisers back off giving the suspect room to run his course. Officers hope this will discourage him from driving any more recklessly. But in the sky, police helicopters keep close tabs on the pickup. Well, there we can see the LAPD air support following along. The man merges back onto the Hollywood freeway. Well, he's getting back on the 101 freeway north. With police cruisers few and far between, he becomes just another car on the road. 
he's just blending into commuter traffic. I think the other drivers don't even know there's a pursuit going on. After a long, unchallenged trek, he exits the freeway. Without the pressure of black and whites on his bumper, the man appears to be driving more casually. He has no idea that officers are just a stone's throw away. Confirm you have the vehicle 1060. They have him right where they want him, until... Oh, and what's the... A man getting out of his truck, running toward the suspect. He's getting in the pickup. This is crazy. Television viewers watch stunned as a man tries to take the law into his own hands. The, they're still arguing. The men are still arguing there. Officers are forced to reveal themselves. This is a very dangerous situation here. Police now fear all of their efforts to calm the fleeing man may be ruined. Feeling attacked from all sides, the suspect increases his speed. Well, that guy will be identified and arrested by police officers. And he's moving at a very high rate of speed. There's cross traffic. Looks like he's getting out. The moment he thinks he's in the clear, he abandons the truck. The police rush in before he can take this show back on the road. They got him. They got him. Suspect in custody. Get back. I'm going to tell you one more time. Get back. Officers are lucky to end this chase without any harm coming to the public. But as thousands of viewers saw, the outcome was almost very different. When something as dramatic as a high-speed pursuit happens... We're following a chase that's been going on right now for about 25 minutes. And when it's brought into your home... There are more pedestrians. It looks like they're cheering the suspect on. It's natural to want to get involved. They don't want to create a situation that puts innocent people in danger. But when you throw yourself in harm's way, you're defeating officers' entire plans. This is absolutely crazy. Get on the ground! Keeping you safe. Metairie, Louisiana. Police chase a raging drunk across the world's longest bridge. Repeat your traffic, 11. With over 30,000 motorists crossing the structure daily, officers can't afford a major incident. But a major incident is exactly what's about to unfold. The man insanely tries to drive himself off the bridge. Over and over again, the suspect rams his station wagon into the concrete sidewalls. The suspect appears to be completely out of control. But the officer is about to learn that it's even worse than it looks. The suspect is a diabetic, and his recent drinking binge has lowered his blood sugar to dangerous levels. If the man has gone into insulin shock, he may not even realize he's in a life and death situation. The pursuing officer looks on in horror as a suicidal man barrels towards another driver. Luckily, he slams on his brake before impact. But the danger is nowhere close to being over. He's all over the road. He's just going back and forth. The man suddenly swerves right, then ricochets off the wall, flying left. He hits the other wall and bounces back to the right. The force of the collisions disables his engine. But it's still not over. In a move that totally defies logic, the driver hops out of the passenger side door and jumps into the lake below. Sir, I need you to grab onto this life ring if you can hear me and just hold on. With the nearest shore over 13 miles away, the man doesn't stand a chance in the choppy waters. You're not going to be able to swim too much longer. Within a matter of seconds, backup arrives with rescue gear. We need a uh, rope ladder. You got your rope ladder? The rescue officer secures the rope and prepares to climb down. You should be right there underneath the pilot. Thanks to the fast-acting Causeway Police Department, the man is saved. You got me. I'm not going to fight you. In the officer's car, the man admits to being unaware what he did. Any reason why you jumped in the lake? <laughs> I have no Later, police learn this wasn't the driver's first DWI. He's been arrested two times before. Back and forth. But this was his first serious brush with death. And now that he's in police custody, officers will do everything they can. Any reason why you jumped in the lake? <laughs> I have no idea. To make sure it's his last. An officer's patrol car is built to be tough, 
But when a cruiser comes up against an even tougher vehicle, a highway pursuit can turn into a war. Doraville, Georgia. Four patrol cars are in hot pursuit of a hot Mercedes. The driver is wanted in Korea, but right now he's half a world away, getting to know the Doraville PD. Up to 115. Built to handle the Autobahn, the German-made car tears up the Georgia highway. Patrol cars' engines labor just to keep up. Well, I'm not catching the catch up. The suspect plays a turbocharged game of cat and mouse, taunting the officers with every tap of the brakes and every wild swerve. Well, watch out now. Wait a he treats the highway like his own private obstacle course. Only the obstacles here are innocent civilians. The officers have to run the course too, weaving through and around the terrified motorist. Suddenly, traffic thickens and slows down the suspect. Other cars unwittingly help box him in, but not long enough for officers to make a move. The slippery driver guns the engine. And within seconds, he's a quarter mile ahead. Officers throttle it up to 120. They have to stop this maniac before he kills someone. But the suspect feels invincible in his high performance machine. He even takes a few swipes at patrol cars. And that's when Doraville officers reach their limit. They start to dog the suspect from front and behind. Don't let him out. It's a tricky tactic. Officers have to keep pace with their target while also watching out for other traffic. Suddenly, the primary unit gets within striking distance. But the Mercedes is a heavyweight. Its momentum keeps it on course. The ferocious driver pulls some insane maneuvers and remarkably slips away once more. But the officers get a break when they catch up to him on an open stretch of highway. Jump in the tap and tell the unit to slow down. The primary unit races up for a second attempt, and he makes this one count. Hold on, hold on. The car skids out and rolls twice before coming to rest. He's wrecked, he's wrecked. He's Thanks to the car's durable construction, the driver comes out without a scratch. Now, he'll be extradited to Korea, but in the meantime, he's learned a tough lesson. When any car is pushed this fast, Up to and this hard, it doesn't matter how durable it is. There is always a breaking point. He's right, he's right. A suspect on drugs will ignore caution, fear, even pain. You put somebody like that behind the wheel of a car, and they're almost impossible to stop. Canton, Georgia. A scenic drive through the backcountry roads is about to get wild. A high-speed pursuit that started in another county explodes into Sergeant Danny Doyle's jurisdiction. The suspect is sky high on methamphetamine. Pushing the pedal to the floor, he fights to pull away from Sergeant Doyle. Okay, Jerry, just turn right. Can I still have you? The man tears around blind curves. Officers aren't willing to match his death to fine speeds. The suspect senses his advantage. He flies around a school bus, daring police to keep up. Moments later, a fast turn around a sharp bend almost proves deadly. Okay, you turn left on uh, Old Power. Before long, the suspect has a commanding lead. He soars over a hill and out of sight. By the time Sergeant Doyle conquers the hill, the suspect has disappeared. The sergeant runs a gamut of heart-pounding twists and turns. Finally, he has the man in his sights. Backup units desperately try to block off any possible escape routes. But when a unit hiding around the bend tries to stop the suspect, the drug-absorbed man strikes. 
Sergeant Doyle listens mortified as radio contact abruptly cuts off. Miraculously, the suspect narrowly misses the other officer. But now the extent of his recklessness is painfully clear. If he's this brash with police, innocent motorists don't stand a chance. Sergeant Doyle charges ahead with one purpose, to shut him down now. Then it happens. The suspect skids out of control and smashes into a guardrail. Determined to get away, the driver bails out of the car and runs. The drugs give the man a feeling of invincibility. It takes four officers and an entire can of mace to stop him from brawling. Man, give me a cigarette. All right, well, hang tight. Unbelievably, the man had been fighting the officers with not one, but two broken arms. If I walk back over here so you mess can look at you. The drugs in his system had kept him oblivious to the danger. And when the inevitable happened, they kept him oblivious to the pain. But because of Sergeant Doyle and his team, 71, sir, 41 is one of our units. 12 convictions are going to keep this guy stone cold sober for a very long time. San Fernando, California. A man in a stolen car leads police on a wild chase through valley streets. Okay, they're telling us now there are two people in the car. Police learn the passenger is being held against her will. To make matters worse, they also learn the suspect is just a kid. The driver we're being told is only 15 years old. Officers have to be extra careful pursuing the team through the congested streets. The inexperienced driver flies down the center line, inching by other motorists. He's just swerving from lane to lane. It turns out the boy's been in trouble with the police before. To him, it's all a big joke. Police aren't laughing, and things are about to get much worse. Okay, we're, we're breaking up here. Okay, it looks like he's turning. Oh, he's driving right into a schoolyard. The teenage felon insanely drives onto a high school running track. Students clamber to get out of the way as the boy barrels around the track at 45 miles per hour. Finding only a dead end, the suspect turns around. There's nowhere for him to go. He charges down the football field, headed back out the way he came. But it's too late. Officers have that path blocked. I think this is probably it on him. Police swarm in. The boy's only option now is to give up. Later, the shocked baseball coach recounts the terrifying scene for cameras. He went out the track. Kids were, kids were scattering everywhere, trying to get out of his way. These people that try to evade the police, what are they thinking? You know, they're not going to get away. The driver is charged with felony evading and grand theft auto, but he maintains his indifference. Even during the arrest, he continues to joke. When this unlicensed teen stole a car and hit the road, he graduated into the high-speed world of grown-up crime. Kids were scattering everywhere, trying to get out of his way. And now, he'll have to face the grown-up consequences behind bars. A rule of thumb in police work is to always expect the unexpected. Because when you think you know what a suspect is going to do, he's going to turn around and surprise you. Lowndes County, Georgia. This rental van was caught speeding north from the Florida border, a common sight, considering this is a major drug traffic thoroughfare. Hang on, you know, it's a routine check of a suspicious vehicle. These men seem cooperative. What's in there? Chinese money. Nope. But watch the van's taillights. Somebody's pulling a fast one. 39 miles, 39 miles. That vehicle just took off from me. A third suspect was crouched in the back seat. The deputies take his cohorts into custody and race to catch up with the runaway van. Right here, he's right here in front of you. It turns out the suspects aren't drug runners, they're jewel thieves. And this van is carting $300,000 worth of untraceable loot. With a take that big, 
This driver will try anything to ditch these pursuit-hardened deputies in his powerful rental van. Doing about 70 north mound here. The suspect dodges onto an off-ramp. A backup unit tries to get positioned at the top of the exit. Getting off the three, getting off the three lines. But the suspect screams right by him, barreling back onto the freeway and pushing over 100 miles per hour. The suspect may be outnumbered in his bid for freedom, but the stubborn driver doesn't care. He accelerates, cutting onto another off-ramp and nearly clips the primary unit. More officers respond, desperate to take this guy off the road. He keeps them at bay, tearing through traffic like a high-stakes obstacle course. Then suddenly, the suspect quits running. He pulls to a stop, has to give up. But what happens next is unbelievable. Bailing, bailing. Without a flash of hesitation, the foolhardy suspect flips headlong over the guardrail. Three stories straight down. The deputies can't believe their eyes. You see him? By blind luck, the suspect's ball was broken and his neck saved by the branches of a small tree. The lucky acrobat surrenders, the first wise move he's made all day. This jewel thief ditched his buddies, but he couldn't ditch the Lowndes County Sheriff's Department. And his desperate final lunge for freedom landed him directly in jail. San Diego, California. A police helicopter tears through the night toward a high-speed pursuit. It was originally for reckless driving, cutting a vehicle off at high rate of speed. We're almost 97 and the video camera's running. Seconds later, the chopper's infrared camera catches a glimpse of the suspect screaming by. Uh, looks like a Porsche or something like that. The sports car knights through traffic. Up to about 100. Forcing ground units to slow down for safety's sake. The chopper stays on the suspect, but keeping up with the roadster isn't easy. And uh, he's literally going as fast as we are here. At top speed, the sports car is actually outrunning the helicopter. This guy is going pretty quick, and we're doing all we can do to keep up with him. But when the suspect bails off the freeway, to the Adams Avenue off ramp. any advantage he had is lost. Still, even as speeds drop, the danger level keeps climbing. Watch the corner. They made a quick U-turn. Now that they're on surface streets, cross traffic is an issue. Just blew the stop sign. An issue the suspect decides to ignore. Watch it, officer. There is cross traffic here. While the chopper pilot keeps the ground unit safe, the reckless driver slams through every intersection. And when the suspect is sure he's ditched the cops, and he's turning westbound on Lincoln. He and his buddies ditch the car. Passengers bailing out, drivers bailing out. We're staying with the driver. In a maze of buildings and walls, the driver and one of his pals meet up again. Still running northbound in the alley right now. But with the infrared camera tracking them and the chopper pilot positioning ground units, the only place these guys are running... That police car right there, that's him right in front of you. ...is into the arms of waiting police. We've got a unit taking them down now. The officers are glad these men are in custody, but they're even happier the chase has ended with no injuries. The San Diego Police Air Support Unit has been in existence for more than 10 years. In that period of time, there has never been a San Diego police car involved in any kind of accident during a pursuit when the helicopter was overhead. Watch it, officer. There is cross traffic here. This pursuit was high speed. Straight away now, he's going to really yeah. whack and high risk. Cutting a vehicle off at high rate of speed. But because the San Diego police had a unit high above. We're staying with the driver. These guys were brought down. We've got a unit taking them down now. Without a fight. <laughs> Iowa City, Louisiana. A terrifying incident is unfolding on the interstate. A mentally disturbed man has just stolen a one-ton flatbed truck. The thief refuses to stop. Other motorists are caught off guard. They're forced to the shoulder. The officers get their first break. The suspect slows to a stop at a flashing yellow light. 
With his gun drawn, an officer runs to the driver's side window. The man still refuses to obey. Even with two guns pointed at him, he hits the gas. The officers shoot out the truck's front tires. But even with a crippled vehicle, he continues to run. Bare rims grind into the pavement as the driver pushes the auto to its limit. Running on its last leg, the truck suddenly blows a gasket, filling the road with thick smoke. It's clear this guy will keep running until his truck dies or someone is hit. But officers aren't willing to leave things to chance. Deputy Mike Phillips of the Jefferson Davis Sheriff's Department charges into the truck's path. Phillips had been waiting for the chase to come his way. When he spotted the suspect, he ignored his own safety and threw his Jeep in front of the raging lunatic. The suspect, stunned but not injured, is brought down without a struggle. Phillips suffers two broken ribs and bruised kidneys. Does that just hurt? But that's a price this heroic officer was willing to pay to keep the public safe from harm. In May 1999, Deputy Mike Phillips was killed in the line of duty. Our hearts go out to his family, friends, and fellow officers. to murder for hire, Phoenix, Arizona. This housewife looks sweet and innocent, but looks are deceiving. This woman is coldly and methodically searching for someone to kill her husband. Not knowing where to start, she opened the yellow pages, and there she saw an ad that read, Guns for Hire. She thought this might be a quick way to find a killer. Guns for Hire of Arizona Incorporated. We're a theatrical business. Owner Lee Wilson was caught off guard. At first, I actually thought that this was a legitimate call that she was calling uh, to try and book a show. All of a sudden, it started to dawn on me that this might be somebody who was actually talking to me about having her husband killed. His next call was to the police. Now, Detective Jack Ballantyne, on the right, is posing as a contract killer. He meets with the woman, who by all accounts is a respected local citizen. She was the social line in the community, the Sunday school teacher, two great kids, a lovely family. But today, she's got homicide on her mind. She makes it clear she's done her homework and doesn't want any slip-ups so she's putting her hitman to the test. It was a job interview, and I was having to convince her I was the person that could do it, and her questions were outstanding. This lady checks her notes as carefully as if she were planning a party. Fortunately, Detective Ballantyne is very convincing as the dangerous killer. Now Ballantyne asks the all-important question. In a bizarre twist of logic, the woman explains that she's unhappy in her marriage, but she doesn't want to have to face the scandal of a divorce. Convinced that this woman is serious and deadly, Valentine gets ready to spring the trap. How much money you got that you're going to be able to pay? Today? Yeah, today. I, I'm not going to tell you. Minus okay. 100. With the money in place, they discuss the deadline. Now you want him dead by? Um, Thursday, June 17th. She hands over the money and her husband's picture. This seals the deal. It also seals her fate. Valentine steps away and gives the signal. 
A team of officers calmly approach and arrest her. This was definitely not part of her plan. With all the questions on paper, numbered, and, and goes down the list one by one by one, that was, that was the most outrageous thing I've ever experienced in this line of work. When this pillar of the community set out to solve her marital problems, she made some foolish mistakes. But her biggest mistake wasn't just poor planning or mistaking a cop for a killer. Her biggest mistake was in thinking that murder might be a good solution for a bad marriage. Laura, Ohio. Police get a complaint about a speeding brown Mustang, but it's not what they expect. Officers jockey close behind the suspect. Try again. A runaway named Starward Bound. Racing down the road at 15 miles per hour. He's all over the road. The stallion refuses to pull over. Headed towards West Mountain on 571. The four-legged fugitive has to be stopped before he wanders into traffic. But how does a police cruiser stop a horse? Come on, I need some help. The townspeople are quick to assist. They pour out of their cars and home, trying hard to wrangle the beast by hand. <laughs> but the thoroughbred canters right through the roadside rodeo. Eventually, the animal's owners catch up to the pursuit. They force the fugitive to the shoulder. But the crafty equine escapes through a parking lot. Police race to catch up. The only thing they can do is let the escapee wear himself down. And finally, he does. Did you copy that? I apprehended the horse. Starward Bound is corralled. And once again, the streets are clear for two-legged commuters. Compared to most calls the Laura PD gets, this one was rather tame. I had a horse galloping up Main Street. But whatever the trouble, officers know it's their job <laughs> to rein it in. Okay, that's clear. An officer on the beat is going to see everything and then some. Uh, I've seen cows running on the freeway, naked guys riding bicycles, um, even people almost going up in flames. Eden, North Carolina. You can't be too careful with a drunk on a moped. In pursuit of a DUI suspect. The driver slows to a shaky stop, but he sure doesn't want to let go of his cigarette. What's your location? Unfortunately, he dropped the hot ash into his gas tank. The officer pulls her car back for safety's sake, but the moped wizard just sits there, oblivious to the flames between his legs. Moments later, this tipsy genius looks down and realizes he's on fire. So he starts slapping himself. That's a good idea. When that fails, the man finally gets off his burning bike. Then he sets it down gently. He certainly doesn't want it getting scratched. The officer rushes in to extinguish the flame, ordering the DUI suspect to step back. The driver swears he isn't drunk, and he can prove it. See, the bottle is still half full. The man retrieves the booze and cleverly conceals it from the officer. But bad luck, she sees it and wants it. Of course, he refuses. A man isn't going to give up a half bottle of bourbon that easy. Even when he's told that the booze is evidence, the man refuses to hand it over. And the moment the officer turns around to check the fire, the man does his level best to get rid of that evidence. Now, drunks are pretty smart, but the officer sees everything. So with half of the evidence already in his stomach, the suspect decides to make the ultimate sacrifice. He even gets rid of the bottle. So he's amazed when she finishes with the fire and takes him directly to jail. Drinking and driving don't go together. In pursuit of a DUI suspect. However, drinking and stupid often go together. So when this man set his own pants on fire, the officer took him from the hot seat to the cooler. Nassau County, Florida. 
Deputy Butch Osborne pulls over a Dodge van bearing incorrect license plates. Pull the vehicle over and stop now. The plates belong on a Ford vehicle, and Deputy Osborne knows it. Have your driver's license with me. The driver tries to explain why he doesn't have his wallet or identification. I just got out of bed. I don't have the money. I just realized that. The man verbally gives the officer his driver's license number. Deputy Osborne goes to call it in. Do me a favor and just step to the back of the vehicle and wait back here for me. The suspect waits behind his vehicle, acting casual. Even when a backup unit arrives, he continues to play it cool. But when he realizes it's a canine unit, the driver does something unbelievable. He dives through the window, obviously worried about what the dog might find. He slaloms down the road at breakneck speed. The desperate actions of a man was something to hide. I'm in pursuit of this vehicle now. Hoping to shake the officers, the suspect rumbles across the median and pulls a risky U-turn. We're hitting the median. But the deputies stay right on his tail. Still not stopping. The van is like a roving road hazard as the driver rages through traffic. The deputies grow increasingly concerned for public safety. Watch out, watch out. Any opening is fair game for the driver. Without missing a beat, he blows through a stop sign and runs over anything that gets in his way. He's driving really recklessly. As he crosses the county line, the deputies pull out of the pursuit. We're gonna back off now, I guess. It's a lucky break for the driver, or so he thinks. But in the next county, officers corner the suspect and are finally able to bring him in. It turns out this nervous driver really did have something to hide. Do me a favor, just step to the back of the vehicle and wait back here for me. The deputies eventually learned that he was carrying more than 100 grams of dope. He was charged with possession of narcotics. And because of this stunt, he got to add speeding to elude to his felony record. An officer's life depends on being ready for anything. And he better be ready the second he starts his shift. Riverdale, Georgia. Sergeant Greg Franklin is just coming on duty when he gets the call. All units and 80, is there anyone ahead of this vehicle? A fellow officer in pursuit of a stolen vehicle needs backup. Sergeant Franklin guns his patrol car and rushes to assist. He pulls alongside the fleeing vehicle, but the suspect just stomps harder on the accelerator. Down the road, traffic slows at a busy intersection. Sensing an opportunity, the driver swerves directly at Franklin's cruiser, trying to ram him into a stopped vehicle. The sergeant narrowly avoids a collision. Within seconds, he's back in pursuit. The second squad car was not so lucky. The other officer was unable to clear the intersection. He's out of the chase. Sergeant Franklin's day has barely begun. Now he's the last man standing between a dangerous criminal and freedom. The suspect pulls his stolen sports utility vehicle onto the freeway. He weaves recklessly from lane to lane, darting around startled rush hour motorists. Then he barrels onto the uneven shoulder at almost 130 miles an hour. But the desperate suspect still can't shake the tenacious sergeant. He veers off the highway, daring to try his luck on the crowded surface streets. He races up the wrong side of the road in a deadly game of chicken. Franklin backs off. The suspect sees his advantage and rockets towards another crowded intersection. One final gamble could spring him. But this time he loses control and nearly loses it all. As the suspect swerves to avoid the stopped cars, his tires skid on the dirt. The vehicle slams into a ditch and nearly flips onto its roof. Sergeant Franklin makes sure the suspect doesn't even think about fleeing on foot. As fellow officers finally catch up, the sergeant takes the suspect into custody. And this joy ride is over. Sergeant Greg Franklin wasn't even on duty when this car thief started his run from the law. 
But by the time this lane changing, chicken playing, risk taking pursuit was over, Franklin had definitely put in a full day's work. Way to start off the shift. So there we have it. The insanity of running from the law. How long have we been warning them? Well, now he's wanted for assault with a deadly weapon on a police officer. It begins on some windy bridge. It starts for some simplistic reason. Of course, the police can't make psychological pronouncements. They're actually waving to the suspect. But it sure looks like they're still crazy. Unbelievable. After all these years.